persistence. This means that if your device ever happens to reboot, that the route is still there because if your computer rebooted and, and the route was not persistent and the route would disappear and people would not be able to connect and there would be chaos. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. That was also off script. I just had to get a get a handle on myself and remind myself that I'm a CSP instructor and I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a professional and to compose myself and get my words out clearly because a lot of people are depending on the information put out here. Okay, back to the script. Here is how Kerber roasting goes. And just remember that I'll keep it high level and I won't be mentioning too many of the tools and techniques used because I don't really want to actually discuss how to hack Kerberos or crack Kerberos tickets. Uh, I am a CISSP and this is a CISSP video after all, so I'm not trying to divulge how to illegally do something. Right? I'm not going to tell you how to illegally crack tickets. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that will do that. This is not one of them. Not that I really know anything about it either. I'm I'm pretty much clueless when it comes to pen testing or, or hacking. Uh, I'm more on the defensive side. So instead of hacking tools, I'll try my best to say pen testing tools without specifically identifying them or, or, or what commands to use. This is all just high level. It's, it's all you need for the CISP anyway. Uh, you know, the point isn't to learn how to exploit Kerberos. It's to know what to do as a manager if something like that happens or, or what to do to try and minimize the risk of it becoming realized. That's all you're doing on the CISP exam, trying to reduce your risk. Whew, okay. First step, get a pen testing tool with a command line interface. Use this tool to query Active Directory. Meaning, the prerequisite for this is that you are already part of the Active Directory domain. You're already in that local area network Active Directory domain. As a pen tester, this access may already be given to you, or you may have to compromise an account that is part of Active Directory to even begin performing this attack. Second, enter the command that will search Active Directory for service accounts to find the ones that have service principal names, spins, right? Like we talked about, surface accounts are used by processes of a system, and the way to identify them is by their spins. Re re remember that? Yeah, you do. Not all accounts have spins, so for this attack, we are trying to find accounts with only service principal names. Because that way we know that it belongs to a service, and that it's just not some user's workstation or some user's account. You then use this pen testing tool that you fire up while already part of the Active Directory domain and you enter a script or command to search for accounts that can be identified with SPNs. Third step, the script will return within the command line a list of account directory accounts with SPNs. You will see their names in a format that we mentioned earlier, like this. Something like uh, service principal name, MySQL, SVC, Luke SQL, dash dot SQL lab, local, and the port 1433. Okay? So within your command line, a list appears with service account with, S with associated SPNs. And we can request these tickets from the domain controller that are associated with this SPN. Because, because the domain controller isn't going to authenticate us for the service. The domain controller lets the server do the authenticating. So really, any account can request tickets from the domain controller. By the way, while doing all this, some documents refer to the KDC as the domain controller, and some refer to it as the authentication server, or the domain controller as well. It, it, it got a little confusing for me. I think it's just that all the components of Kerberos are on Active Directory, and some people use either the Active Directory terms, and others use the actual Kerberos terms. Me, I'm going to use both just so you get used to hearing both. Step four. Now then, using the same command line tool, we then use a command to now request a service ticket, a ticket granting ticket, a TGT, from the Active Directory Domain Controller or the Kerberos Distribution Center. Both of those terms. We are going to also request a ticket and in the command we use to request a ticket, we are not going to use the service account name of the MySQL server, but the service principal name, this thing. This will make the KDC send us a TGT specific to the SQL service. 
Now in step 5, after we have been given the TGT, we will use another pen testing tool to offload that ticket from memory to somewhere offline on our system to brute force, like an external drive or, or even just a local folder or file. Before going any further, I, I just want to say a few things to remind ourselves of what happens in an actual Kerberos process in, in relation to what we're doing now. In Kerberos, when a user wants to access a service like, like a printer or a file server or a SQL server, it has to first request a ticket from the KDC and authentication service, right? Right. The authentication server will then provide the user with two messages in the ticket. A message that has information about the ticket granting server so that the SQL server can confirm that the user is authenticated with the authentication service. So the, you know, so, the, so the server can confirm that the user and the KDC have a trust relationship. And that the ticket was granted by the authentication service. And the second message, the one that relates to what we're talking about, is the ticket granting ticket to be used to access the SQL server. It is the SQL server who will only be able to decrypt the ticket granting ticket. Why is that? Why will the SQL server, the principal in our scenario, be only be able to be only be the one to decrypt the TGT? Because the ticket granting server encrypted the TGT with the SQL server's NTLM hash. And since the SQL server is the only one who has its own secret key and subsequent NTLM hash, it is the only one who could decrypt the TGT. And since the TGS is the only other person who knows the NTLM hash of the server's secret key, the server knows the TGT has been issued by the TGS. A lot of letters and terms flying around. There's really no other way but to just know it. I can't make it any easier by saying ticket granting ticket or TGT or spelling it out. When I say TGT, TGS as it relates to Kerberos, you just got to know it. You just got to pick up you got you got you got to stick with me and know what I'm talking about otherwise you really got to go watch uh, a video on Kerberos and how that's done so far what we've learned in Kerberosting when we obtain the TGT from our script this is the ticket we want to present to the SQL server right but before we do we offloaded it to an external location to do some more stuff to it okay lots of stuff going on which is why it is important, again, to first understand a good foundation knowledge in Kerberos. Y you know what the worst part is? After going through all this, you may never even get a single question about Kerberos on the exam. Ain't that a... <laughs> ain't that a something? Alright, step six. We've received the TGT from the ticket granting service, and now, before we send the TGT to the principal we want to access, the SQL server, we have offloaded it. And now, while offline, we will use a dictionary attack to brute force into the ticket and crack it. By the way, the TGT we get from the TGS is also known as TGS rep. At least that's what I saw on Wireshark when I was trying this out in, in my lab. Okay. Lots of CISP topics, terms, terminology, vocabulary happening here. Um, first of all, this is being done offline. The cracking of the ticket is being done offline, so it can't be detected. It's not going to be in your logs. Something to keep in mind as a, as a security professional. And we're brute forcing using a dictionary attack on the encrypted ticket granting ticket given to us by the authentication service. Now remember, we're trying to decrypt the ticket that is encrypted with the SQL server's NTLM hash. We are brute forcing with a dictionary attack to crack the ticket. We do that by guessing the password, hashing it, and trying to decrypt it. Guessing the password, hashing it, and trying to decrypt over and over and over again until we get it. We're brute forcing it. Because that's exactly what the server's principal, the SQL server, is also going to do. But they're only going to just do it once because they actually have the NTLM hash. The only, different is that the, the only difference is that the SQL server knows its password and the resulting hash legitimately. But we, via the use of Kerberosting, a Kerberos exploitation method, 
We are trying to guess the password, generate the right hash for it, and then use that hash to decrypt the ticket. Okay. If you haven't guessed by now, and if you just started reading your CSP content, you definitely have to know the fundamental concepts of cryptography to even begin to try and understand what I'm talking about. And that's why we learn cryptography. It isn't to memorize as much as we can. It isn't to memorize desmos and keys and block sizes. It's to understand it in order to really understand even more technical things such as Kerberos and Kerberos exploitation. Like, like if you think just knowing the OSI model is enough for landing a networking job at a company, there's a low chance that's going to happen. Especially now when security skills are more in demand than ever. The, the date being March 2021 for anyone listening to this in, in the future. It's great that you know the OSI model, but do you know how to apply it to a real world scenario? That's what counts. That's all the CSP exam is. It's one big job interview to test to see if you, if you can apply the knowledge you have learned in the books to different types of scenarios and situations. Okay. Once you crack the password in step seven, you will have cracked the password. Obviously, you will have cracked the ticket. The password is the NTLM hash of a secret key used to encrypt the TGT and the password that is used by the service account. You now have the password to the service account on the Active Directory that can access the database service. What we have with that, we have the power to do. <laughs> oh, I really gotta reread reread that uh, that script. Uh, what I meant to say is, after you've figured out the password, after you've cracked it, but after you've cracked the NTLM the password and know the resulting NTLM hash, you now have the power to create things like silver tickets and golden tickets which is what we talk about in our next Kerberos exploitation method.